Good morning. Aren't you all a little old to be? <laughs> no. Since I'm honorary chairman, you aren't. <laughs> uh, I just have to say uh, thank you before we individually have some pictures taken and have some greetings here for what you're doing. And, it's the largest youth organization I guess there is. As a matter of fact, five members of our cabinet are former members of 4-H. And uh, are you curious about who they are? <laughs> John Block, Bill Clark, Ted Bell, Secretary of Education, uh, Bill Rucklesshouse, and Dave Stockman. <laughs> I remember once doing one of the General Electric Theater uh, half-hour television shows that had to do with the farm family and 4-H and the tragedy when the young man had to sell uh, his steer. And, uh, I was playing his father and uh, an actress and Gray was playing his mother. It was a uh, one of our very successful shows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know whether we did anything to help the young people that still face that trauma every time they've raised a prize winner, but uh, we, we enjoy doing it. Well, anyway, I'd better quit talking and meet each of you, <coughs> shake hands. Mr. President, Red Poland. Hey, where do you No, if you could be? stand right here, this is great. Thank you. I was pleased that we are the largest organization in serving youth. We have five million young men and women that we serve. And we have over 40 million alumni. 40 million. We also are pleased that we think we exemplify the, uh, the type of program that you sponsored, and that's public and private sector working together. We have strong support from corporations, foundations, and from individuals. And we thank you and Mrs. Reagan for your encouragement and your support. I have our 1983 annual report, which is fresh off the press. I know you don't have too much to read, but perhaps you can peruse this as you go on your trip to Ireland, and there is a four-leaf clover to wish well, you Well, I'd be very happy to, and I, I, in my remarks, I did leave something out also that I should have said, that uh, Nancy has told me how much work 4-H is doing in the thing that she's so interested in, and that is the drug abuse in this country. I know. We appreciate she's it very much. Very grateful and very pleased about that. All right, Mr. President, may I present Robert Gill. Ready for your trip overseas. We uh, brought a little something along here for you. It's uh, not a shamrock, but it's a uh, four-leaf clover, which is a symbol of 4-H, and we wish you a uh, fruitful and a healthy and a safe trip overseas. Well, it's an Irish-American shamrock. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. For uh, today, these little key support 4-H uh, pins as a member of the board, the honorary chairman, we'd like to have one. you have one of those for your lapel, and also one for Mrs. Reagan because of her great cooperation with 4-H uh, as well. So we wanted you to have one of those, and we appreciate Thank you very much. Today. I think for the balance of the pictures, <laughs> put it on. Can I help you? No, oh, I think I can. There. That's fine. Mr. President, yeah. Everybody ready? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have to take a second to tell you a little finish to that story about that TV show. Yeah. Colleen Gray. We had a final scene, it was a very scene, and she, uh, we were standing around, they lighted up, lined up, and I said, uh, I'd like to tell you, oh, she had told me that she was having trouble. She, she wanted to, you know, be teary and very emotional. And I started, and she was so used to hearing me tell jokes and everything, she said, oh, please, not now. No. <laughs> I said, will you shut up and listen? So I said, did you know, and I said, this is a true story. It's an institution, young people, children in the institution, like an orphan asylum. And there was one young girl who was so out of line all the time that they wanted to get, if they could, they'd like to get rid of her. 
And one day, one gal working there came into the office and said, I think we've got her. I found her stuffing this note in a hollow tree down by the fence. And it was right close to the fence where it could be reached from out of the hollow tree from outside. And they were all so happy. They thought they'd get rid of this troublemaker. And they opened the note and read it. And it said, to whoever gets this, I love you. <laughs> I said, Ashton, she was crying. I was crying. <laughs> Sometimes, even when they're out of line, there may be a reason. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you for the cemetery. Yes, I didn't think I was going to be able to get the last few lines out. That was a very good I don't know how to explain. You're sitting there watching the casket. And then I told him, was he a young fellow just fresh over there? Was he someone who was counting days until his time um, comes up? 41st mission. I've seen lots of people go on the 41st expecting to get back to the 42nd. Yeah. World War II. That's all that. Yeah. The interesting note of that was 991 casualties. I was amazed at how many of them, the high proportion, that in the few seconds we had in shaking hands, said something of a religious nature and their own conviction about praying. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Thank you. Have a safe trip. Safe trip.